I'll be showing the IT admin console for Microsoft Teams in education. Now, even if you're a teacher watching this, you can share this video with your IT admin to show them just how easy it is to configure. So I'm signed in as the IT admin, and as IT admin, I see this admin button. I'm going to click this. Now, this is the IT admin page, and I'm going to click Show All. Now, if I scroll down, I'm going to see Teams right here, and I'm going to click this. Now you see all the options on the left-hand side of ways I can configure Teams. I'm not going to cover all these in this video. I'm just going to show a few of the more popular ones. And probably the most popular one is Meetings. So let's go here. Now I have a bunch of different settings and policies. First off, there's some basic meeting settings. So things like anonymous users can join the meeting and, and a few other uh, options about email invitations. But the one that's really interesting is Meeting Policies. Let's click that. Now, policies are the way that I can default set all the different things in Teams meetings. For example, I can add my own as well. So if I click Add right here, I'm going to give my own meeting policy. We'll call it Mike's Meeting Policies. And look at all these different configurations. You know, allow Meet Now on channels, allow channel meeting scheduling, allow scheduling private meetings on or off. This is an important one, allow transcription. So this is for captioning. I want to turn that on. I want to make my meetings more inclusive. I can allow cloud recording or not, and many different options around content sharing. Maybe I want to allow stuff. If I want to allow an external participant to give control or request control, I can turn that on. There are many options for meetings participants and guests. So I can let anonymous users start a meeting potentially. I could choose who to admit automatically or not. I can say allow meet now in private meetings. I can say chat in meetings, disabled or disabled. Maybe I want to disable chat in meetings. And when I'm done, I click save at the bottom. Now you can see Mike's meeting policies. This can get applied across the whole tenant. And I can go and I can edit this. I can duplicate it. I can delete it. I can do some other customizations. But you can really see how specific I can get with my meeting policies. For message policies, there's another set of things. So again, I can create my own or I can look at the global one. Global means by default, these are all the defaults across the board. So I can do things like choose who can delete sent messages, read receipts, I can turn chat on or off. I can control things like stickers and memes, translating messages. Let's turn that one on. I want to be more inclusive. Again, the most inclusive way to go is allow translation and captioning. Allow immersive reader for viewing messages. I hope you never turn that one off. Anyways, there's many, many different ways that you can configure your messaging policies as well. A very recent update was policy packages. So I'm going to click on policy packages right here. Now, what does that mean? Well, these were a predefined set of policies that an IT admin can deploy across a whole organization really easy. And we've updated these. So we have example, education primary school student using remote learning. So if I go into here, you will see a bunch of meeting and messaging policies set default for students who are doing remote learning. So the meeting policy is much more restrictive, right? You, you can't have the students doing much in the meetings. They'll be more teacher controlled. Or if I look at the messaging policy, it's a little bit more restrictive. And so what this means is it's very easy for an IT admin to deploy different policy packages. Now for the teacher, for example, we just rolled out primary school teacher using remote learning. So if I drill into this, you'll see I can find the messaging and meeting policies. And all of these are mostly turned on for the teacher. In addition to these new remote learning policy packages, we have a higher education student, we have a primary school student, secondary school student, and teacher. So all of these policies are customized for IT admins to deploy. Another one I'll show is Teams apps. So I'm going to click here on Teams apps and go to manage apps. So if I want to upload a new app, I can do that here. So there's lots of different apps out there. There's Wakelet, Buncee, Kahoot. There's also set of policies. So if I go here and globally, maybe I want to allow everyone to upload their own custom apps, great education apps, I can turn that on. So that's another popular way to allow more customization of apps. And then finally, down at the bottom, there's assignments. And there's a couple of great options here. First off, I can enable weekly guardian and digest email. So if I have the parent emails through school data sync, I can turn that on. I can enable make code or I can enable turn it in. And turn it in is a plagiarism checking third party tool. So that's why I can turn these on or off. And I actually go into detail on the weekly guardian email digest. And that's a different quick tip video that you can search in my playlist. So that should give you a really good sense of all the different options that you have in the Microsoft Teams Meeting Admin Console and encourage your IT admins to watch this video and explore more.